Short sales, what are they and how do they work? Can you even find a deal that's a short sale deal in a crazy overpriced market like we're in right now? Well, we're going to talk to somebody today that's going to tell us if that's happening and how it works. So that's what we're talking about today on the Sub 2 Deals Show. Hey, sub tours, welcome to this episode of the sub two deal show where we talk about all things subject to now, occasionally we'll talk about something else in the real estate investing world, but it's always something to help you with your real estate investing business. Uh, today we're going to be talking about short sales, how they work and if they'll work in this crazy market. Gosh, I, you know, when I think about short sales, I always think about, uh, short sales prior to or right after the crash when, you know, real estate was so devalued and, and everything. And now the market's just so crazy. You'd think uh, that they don't exist out there, but we've got a guy here today that's going to tell us that they do and tell us all about how they work. Guys, if y'all are looking for real estate, creative finance training, maybe you don't have a huge budget or you're just getting started and want something that's really affordable, we're going to ask you to check us out at $7coaching.com. Uh, that is $7 coaching uh, where you can learn all about creative finance and it won't cost you a whole bunch of money to do it. So we're going to go ahead and get started today. We're going to bring David in, Mr. David Randolph. How are you, David? I'm doing pretty good. Okay, great. Well, good to see you. Uh, David and I have talked several times about short sales and he is uh He's quite an expert on it. David, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and um, uh, how you got into short sales. Sure. Yeah, I kind of chuckle with your your intro because uh, it's uh, it's almost like um, you know we we think this is a, a hidden unicorn out here, and and I'm going uh, all the hundred thousand dollar deals that just profit that just mm -hmm. close in the past two months. Mm -hmm. Are there any? So we'll get to that, but. You know, my background, you know, is, you know, I'm a rehabber. I've mm -hmm. been in real estate, you know, since, you know, 2009 and 10. Um, basically, I rehab about five to 10 houses a year. Um, one of my claims to fame is all my renovated houses have sold in seven days or less, mm -hmm. at least price or higher for now 11 years. And, you know, that may not be very impressive in today's market, but I said for 11 years. So my homes are drop dead gorgeous. Um, I make fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars profit on each house. Now these are just two hundred fifty thousand dollar houses here in St. Louis, Missouri. But I do that by buying them as short sales. So my method of purchase is short sale, and so I'm really good at negotiating. And these are not short sales on the MLS with a realtor. See, the realtor has already screwed it up. OK, mm -hmm. so this is with the homeowner and the bank. So I'm very good at negotiating short sales directly with the bank. Um, and so, you know, I'm just a small guy, regular guy. Um, I do have a hard money lending program. Um, I've been blessed to have over three million dollars from real estate, uh, you know, in my retirement accounts that I lend out to other rehabbers. Um, you know, my heart and passion is to help new people get started. So I lend my money out to rehabbers for the entire purchase of the house, all the rehab costs, all the points on the loan and all the monthly interest payments. They need zero dollars in their checking account financially to start rehabbing. And I want to help, I want to help others get started like me. Mm -hmm. You know, about two years ago, I started teaching short sales now. And so I've got coaching students, um, you know, I've got training programs and I just love it because, you know, for a while, I thought, well, this is just something that only David can do, right? You know, because uh, nobody else says they make a hundred thousand dollars profit, right. you know, in even today's market or in the market previously. Uh, and so I do have, uh, you know, training 
courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and, and different levels. And I love it because actually, uh, William, I'm going to cut my rehabs down to no more than five this mm -hmm. year because I love teaching the short sales. And so, you know, I, I basically, you know, started doing this for 11 years straight now. I left my corporate job, you know, in, in 2006, homeschooled my kids and then started real estate in 2009 been doing that um, ever since uh, with it. And just, uh, you know, real estate is a great field uh, to, to really change your life. Mm -hmm. So, so you said you're into hard money lending right now. So you've got actually a hard money lending program that you lend to other investors. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All across the country. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot to it. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, I give you my uh, material suppliers, my product SKU numbers, um, I help you through the critical path. There's a lot to, you know, being a rehabber and when you're brand new, it's kind of scary. So, you know, um, not your typical hard money lender, uh, mm -hmm. with it. I basically, you know, help you sell the house. Um, I've got a 1-800 number and a website. And so it's kind of a big program, uh, you know, with my, you know, for my lending system so that people will be successful with it. Okay. So, so everyone that's interested maybe in that can contact you at, at your email address there on the screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They could do that. Um, they also could just uh, text the word lend to my phone number L E N D and I'll send you the four page uh, PDF lending document because there's a lot more in it than what I said. But if they text lend to six, three, six, six, eight, five, two, nine, nine, zero, then I'll send them my lending document. Um, and then it'll explain even more of what we go through in that, you know, like sharing contractors, you know, and, and other items like that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of people, uh, I know investors I know that'd be interested in, uh, in hard money. So do you just do that for, for rehab purposes or do you lend for, you know, for, for investment purposes for other things? <laughs> right now I only have $3 million. Mm -hmm. And so it's all being lent out to rehabbers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't invest in apartment buildings. Now I lend to you if you have a value add apartment, like for example, uh, a guy had a 17 unit apartment building. I lent him 200,000 to buy it and then 200,000 to uh, refurbish each of the units. And then mm -hmm. he went to the local bank and got a commercial loan for, I think 900,000 mm -hmm. and cashed me out right. um, with it and stuff. But um, no, it's mainly for residential homes that need to be fixed up. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. All right. So, so David, we're here today to talk about short sales though. We got off on a rabbit trail about lending, but so tell everybody that may not know uh, what is a short sale. Okay. Well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Google definitions out there and they're mm -hmm. mostly all wrong because what you hear that a short sale is, is that somebody um, owes more on their loan than what the house is worth. In other words, mm -hmm. if they were to try to sell the home, uh, the proceeds on the HUD statement wouldn't pay off their loan. And that's mm -hmm. actually not correct. Uh, what it really is, is the homeowner, if they were to sell their home, they can't pay off all of their debt. So that's debt from the mortgage. That's debt from the second mortgage or the HELOC. That's debt from the credit card judgment. That's debt from the tax lien, federal and state tax lien. So it's all debts that are associated with that seller, that person. Mm -hmm. and that's where people get a little tripped up is that, you know, hey, you might have a low loan. Uh, you know, the loan might not be very much, but that doesn't matter if they've got a $30,000 federal tax lien, mm -hmm. you know, on them and the house. And so that, you know, becomes a short sale. Right. With it. And so that's the quick definition of a short sale is that you have to get the bank to reduce what they owe down low enough that when the buyer, you, the investor as the buyer, when you buy the house, that that purchase price pays off all the other debts. And so the bank is the one who takes the hit, who reduces their payoff figure down to a number so low that it can pay everything off um, at their reduced value. So in other words, you're going to say the home isn't worth the loan. They're going to accept a much lower value. And that's the key to short sales at that point is, well, how much of a lower value should it be? <laughs> mm -hmm. <Right. laughs> so, 
in in today's market, um, I, what I hear you say, and I know most of us think of a short sale in 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 the way that you described it the first where the house isn't worth what the bank loan is, but you said it's different. There are all the other liens that have to be considered too. What do you do to, to motivate a bank to take less instead of just saying, Hey guys, we can just foreclose and wipe that other stuff out. Well, what do you, what do you there's do? Probably at three key points that um, people need to be aware of with that is that one, the banks don't want to own the house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the banks aren't in the business of rehabbing and fixing them up. Um, and two, um, you know, the value of the home, you know, is dependent on, you know, the repairs and what the comps are, you know, in the area. So, you know, a couple things happen is that the banks, when they have a non-performing loan, they've got to take, so let's say the loan is a hundred thousand dollars, you mm. know, the bank has to take $1.5 million off of their books because it's non-performing. It's a fiat currency. You've heard of that fiat mm -hmm. currency. Right. Well, that's what the system is. 15 to 20 to one ratio. The bank, you know, has a non-performing loan of a hundred thousand. So they have to not lend out a one and a half million dollars to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is they would gladly take say $50,000 for that loan. Mm -hmm. If they could get that as off their books and not as a non-performing loan. Now they can take that 50,000, go out and lend a million dollars out to people and make, mm -hmm. you know, these higher interest rates on that amount of money. So that's a big right. incentive for them. Um, you know, the other thing too, is that, you know, with the moratorium, they weren't able to foreclose. And so right. they're already buying the eight ball mm -hmm. with their mm -hmm. shareholders yelling and screaming mm -hmm. uh, at them with the government forbidding them from doing a foreclosure. So at this point, right. you know, they need to write this off and, and take these losses. Um, and so that's one of the primary, you know, factors, you know, that the banks are actually looking at that people don't realize. Mm hmm. I got gotcha. you. So from if do I understand correctly, most of, of the short sales that you're going to run into are going to be houses that need significant work. Oh, absolutely not. Um, you know, don't tell that to Christian Stum, who just uh, wholesaled a house last Monday mm -hmm. where he uh, bought it for ninety five thousand, sold it the same day for one ninety five. OK. Mm -hmm. Uh, with it. And so, um, no, that's absolutely not the case. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I thought that from about 2009 to about 2015. Mm -hmm. And then 2015, I started doing short sales on pretty houses, eight years old, granite countertops. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was making um, $80,000 on those houses uh, mm -hmm. with it. And, and, and there's a lot of reasons why that is. Uh, but no, you can absolutely do a short sale on a pretty house. Right. So, uh, so what kind of scenario, give me an example of, of a, a situation where someone would take a pretty house in, especially in our market. Now, and I, I know all kind of things happen, but just a, a scenario that you've got recently where it's a pretty house, they could have listed it and sold it for full price probably, but you wound up doing a short sale with the bank. Well, <laughs> there is a black Knight statistic of 30 mm -hmm. years of data that basically says that if you take people in foreclosure, so over 30 years, you take people with 40% equity in their house, they, they could just snap their finger and sell it. They've got 40% mm -hmm. equity. One right. third of all those people went to foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So this is not about saying that the that the value of the house is is low and they can't sell it this mm -hmm. is about the homeowner having lost his job lost his wife got cancer has to move out of town uh has a divorce and other mental uh, not mental diseases but mental problems mental right. things to deal with right where they will let the house go to foreclosure and mm -hmm. you can step in at that point and then swing the pendulum from hey you're you know you're owed hundred the bank wants 190,000 fart you know it might be you know worth 200 but if you can convince the bank that it's worth 25,000 okay the homeowner doesn't care they were walking away from it in the first right. place so that's what I do I go from they're owed 190 to whoop it's actually worth 25,000 
Mm -hmm. Okay, or 50,000. And that's a technique, okay, to right. do. This is why we're investors, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Real estate invest entrepreneurs, okay? Mm -hmm. We're here to, to provide for our family and to help out the family that's about to lose that home because right. here's what happens um, in most all states, except like Arizona, uh, you know, if you lose a house to foreclosure, you still owe all the money. So you mm -hmm. don't want that family to go through that. So you want to be able to step in, help them out in a short sale. Most of the time you get the bank to even pay them some money to help them move. So where they would have got nothing, been kicked out of their house immediately. Instead, they get to stay in the house while you're negotiating for three months, four months, five months, saving their money up, not making any payments, and then getting a payment from the bank on the closing statement at the end of the short sale. And so that's mm -hmm. a much better scenario, win-win for you know them and even the banks. I mean, look... <laughs> The, the banks are 600 pound gorillas. They give me an approval letter that says, you know, that like Christian, they gave me you know, approval letter says you have to pay $95,000 for this house or you can't get it. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they tell you what they want you to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And right. so, you know, they're happy also because, you know, they've agreed to that. They come out and they do their own appraisal. They mm -hmm. have their own people. You're not doing it they're paying their own person to come out and do a bpo or an appraisal mm -hmm. and they come up with that value right okay did i hear you say everywhere except arizona is there something special there that well in, in arizona um the banks take on the collateral only in other words they can't pursue the borrower far mm -hmm. than debt so the home is the collateral only so they can't right come after them. Uh, mm -hmm. But every other, you know, like Missouri, um, you know, they've got seven years to come after the homeowner mm -hmm. for the for the debt. And sure, they're not going to do it right now because you have no job and you, you're getting foreclosed on. But what if you have a job three years from now and they find mm -hmm. out where that's at? They can garnish your paycheck and you can't stop them unless mm -hmm. you file bankruptcy. And so those are all you know, reasons, you know, to tell the homeowner that you don't want to let the foreclosure go through. You know, right. you want to let me try to do the short sale mm -hmm. uh, with it and stuff. But um, don't, uh, I mean, I don't remember the exact numbers, but uh, I know there are several states that do allow a deficiency judgment, but all of them don't. And, and most short sale people I've talked to in the past, so that's part of what you negotiate in that short sale. Isn't that what you do that they can't? come back after that homeowner. Absolutely. You should mm -hmm. never right. ever do a short sale and allow the deficiency to remain in place. Right. You need the approval letter to say that the deficiency is zero or you shouldn't close on the house. You shouldn't right. do it. You know, I had one <clears throat> where basically, um, you know, it was a, a house. <laughs> strangely enough, it was owned by a, uh, uh, the vice president of Bank of America, regional mm -hmm. director for Bank of America doing a short sale on on uh on her house and so uh that was a little strange you know the the big bad bank of america right and uh <laughs> she's having to do a short sale and so um i i got this agreement uh from the bank to be able to buy this house and um the problem was it was the credit union two credit unions mm -hmm. and they're very they almost never wipe out the deficiency on a credit union you know right. they're not really a government loan and mm -hmm. so they gave the approval letter but there was a deficiency and I said, oh, I can't do it. I told you, I gave you my word that, you know, we wouldn't do this short sale, you know, if there was going to be a deficiency. And she basically said, no, I want you to go ahead and do it anyway. And I'm like, no, I gave my word. She had her attorney write me a letter and say, we're di directing you to go through with the, the purchase, even though it's a deficiency. We will wipe it out through a bankruptcy later. And mm -hmm. I said, no not going to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I gave my word that I would not be profiting off of making a deal on this where you would then have a deficiency. So what I did oh. was, so this is a little trick that you can do, William, is, you know, I went back to the bank and I said, no, not acceptable. We won't do it. You know, how much would it take to wipe the deficiency off? How much mm -hmm. would you take right now on closing to mm -hmm. get rid of a deficiency you'll never collect? And right. so they said 25 grand. So I said, done. So I basically paid 25 grand more for the house than I needed to <clears throat> in order to get that deficiency to be zero. OK, so, you know, you, you want to be able to make sure that approval letter doesn't have that deficiency in whatever right. state, you know, that you are in with it. Now, don't cry for me because, 
you know, I made a hundred thousand dollars profit on that house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I mm -hmm. put $500 of outlets in the basement and sold it uh, for a hundred thousand right. dollar profit. So, you know, no reason to cry, you know, that right. I only made a hundred thousand, but uh, the, the sweet part was that was in my Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and stuff. So, you know, you want to always make sure that that deficiency is removed in whatever state uh, you're in. And there's different laws. Missouri, it's seven years to come after you. Mm -hmm. um, different states have different, you know, criteria and stuff like right. that. Uh, you just have to be aware of it and make sure that it's not on the approval letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So how do we find these types of deals? How do you find a short sale deal? Well, there's a lot of ways, but I'll tell you the easiest way for the new investor, the person you know listening in on this this uh, podcast right now, is let's do the easy, low hanging fruit. Those are the people mm -hmm. with a foreclosure date. Okay, those people now have a fixed timeline mm -hmm. where they must get out of the house or take some kind of action. So what we want to do uh, is to reach out first to those people because they're fairly easy to convince. Uh, the, to let you help them do a short sale and keep them in the house longer. So what we do to reach foreclosures is we don't go to www.foreclosureme.com.whatever mm -hmm. and get an aggregated list that's not updated, it's late, and it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. So I teach people to go directly to the county legal newspaper. So mm -hmm. all foreclosures are county specific across right. the United States and each county has what's called a legal newspaper. That's mm -hmm. where they post construction bids, uh, bankruptcies and, and foreclosures. And so right. it's called a legal newspaper. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I teach my students how to find that legal newspaper, the online version, get the names mm -hmm. and addresses from there and reach out directly to them immediately by 5 right. PM of the day that they're posted. You know, mm -hmm. we don't aggregate the data from somebody else. We mail, 5 p.m. that day to mm -hmm. that person. So do you do you mail them or do you call them or how do you normally handle uh, that? I like mail because mm -hmm. I can pay somebody else to do it. Right. Okay. You know, that's real easy. Sure. Um, and it's uh, and so I like a series of two or three letters. Now, that's because in Missouri, I only have 21 days. Mm -hmm. So and uh, Georgia, uh, you know, you guys are lazy. There's 30 days mm -hmm. on a foreclosure. Texas is 21 <laughs> days. Illinois is 90. So depending on how many days they have until that foreclosure date comes up, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of determines on how much you spread the letters apart. But I use three letters in 21 days uh, every other day uh, to reach out to them because it's got my phone number on that letter. And right. so basically uh, I kind of wait for them to call me. Now, you can combine that with you know texting and calling techniques you don't have to use a crm system i do mm -hmm. with my coaching students simply because we record the phone calls and we want right. to have all these to analyze and and we can do uh text blasting in a little bit easier format but you know uh, what i used to do was um i would mail the letters and if i didn't get any calls by the 21st of the month i was worried because i didn't have my short sale for the month i want you know 10 a year. So uh, if someone call, you know, calls me on the fifth of the month, then I've got my short sale for the whole month. And so um, I didn't worry about anybody. The 21st, if no one's called me, now I panic. And so I will basically reach out to them and call them. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so I want to get their answering machine. I don't want to speak to them. Okay. Because, you know, you don't know what they're going to ask you. So in a recording, you can speak to them without them complaining. They right. have to listen to your recording. And mm -hmm. plus, you know, they think you're a bill collector anyway, so they're not going to mm -hmm. answer the phone. Right. So you have a little script that you say on the phone. Now they hear your name, what you are, now your letters. And now between the two, they usually call you from there. Mm -hmm. with it. And so it's not, uh, this isn't, you know, wholesaling 101, five grand a month. You know, I've got 40 people a month in St. Charles County, 40. Mm -hmm. That's not a big budget campaign, okay, right. you know, uh, and so it's just a small targeted list of people, mm -hmm. you know, with it. Right. So do you, it sounds like you, and maybe, maybe, I don't know if you work just locally, but uh, maybe across the country. I mean, I've been investing remotely for over 10 years, but I know you have a lot of students too, but do you guys focus on 
states with short foreclosure timelines or will you go pretty much anywhere? Oh, I've got students in Florida, Illinois, uh, Texas, Ohio, all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, really, the states that are judicial, like Illinois, where there's a longer period of time, you actually have an advantage because, you know, you can reach out to that homeowner over time for them to get to know, like, and trust you first. 21 mm -hmm. days in Missouri is not a lot of time for them to right. get to know, like, and trust you. Um, so you're actually better off in a judicial state. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there's that point where, you know, Illinois, 90 days. So if you mail them a letter on, you know, day zero, they know they got 90 days left. Mm -hmm. So they might not call you till day 60 or something like that. But right. you can at least use more letters for them to reach out and see you. When they finally realize that things aren't changing, you know, they've seen umpteen letters from you and maybe some, some phone calls. So, no, it really, um, you know, doesn't matter what state you're in with it. Well, how, how would you handle that? Let's say well, like right now we're in Florida where the foreclosure might take a year or two. That's a long, that's a lot of letters. Uh, yeah. And so basically, you know, you can, there's uh, websites for monitoring that. And so you can basically watch the progress of the, of the foreclosure case mm -hmm. and then, you know, basically pick a time frame of maybe six months, you know, kind of depends on how well that they, are fighting the actual foreclosure. And so there's websites to monitor exactly what the response is from the attorneys right. on that foreclosure and then kind of pick, you know, people that are more, uh, you know, ripe and ready to, you know, mm -hmm. have to make a decision, you know, with that <laughs> and stuff. And it's kind of interesting. Orlando is like the fourth largest city in the United States for delinquent loans. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I tell you, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish I was in Orlando, fourth largest city in the United States with delinquent loans. Right. Uh, with it and stuff. And stuff. Uh, so, so tell me, you mentioned something uh, earlier about the legal newspapers online. And now I know when I did stuff locally, we did stuff at the courthouse. I mean, we just went to the courthouse, but, but that was a long time ago. They didn't have all the online stuff they do now. But let's just say that I'm a new investor. I'm listening to this and I'm like, okay, I need to find the legal newspaper for this county to do that. What's the best way to do that, David, if you're new and you don't know? Well, it's kind of funny. Um, I've got a, uh, a monthly group coaching call. And one of the first benefits of that group coaching call is a one-on-one -on -one session where I sit down with you and I do the research, find the county, and sit down with you and record a Zoom on how to get those names and addresses uh, from the legal newspaper. And so basically, you know, it's research using Google to find the government websites that are related to, you know, foreclosure postings, share of sales, you know, terminology like that until you get to a point where you're actually, you know, going to a government website, not a website that's a pay paid mm -hmm. service. Now, right. not saying that paying for the service isn't good because what happens is when you get to the legal newspaper, they will have an upgraded option for you to actually pay a, a, a 20 you know, or $30 monthly fee to be able to export it into Excel, which mm -hmm. is a lot easier than handwriting names and addresses down from, you know, looking through it online. So right. it is well worth, you know, doing that. Um, I've got a whole presentation actually on how to do that. Um, I think we were going to try to schedule something with a PowerPoint sometime, mm -hmm. but you know, I got a whole set of slides of exactly uh, how to do that, what to go to, what is called with trustee sale, public notice, dot, 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 right. you know, all the way down through that line uh, with it. And so, yeah, that is an important factor that mm -hmm. you know, people need to do. And like I said, that's this monthly group coaching call I have, the first thing that we do when you join that is get you set up with that actual county where your county is, that legal mm -hmm. newspaper, and uh, kind of record that on a Zoom session for you so you can go back and, and know exactly what you need on how to get the names and addresses because that's where it all starts. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you right. could try bandit signs, but I think that mailing letters straight to the homeowner mm -hmm. makes you three-dimensionally real in their house. Okay, mm -hmm. where they can pick that envelope up anytime and call you. Right. Okay. Uh, so, what about funding for a short sale? Now, I, I know, uh, you know, guys like us, we like creative stuff. We get seller financing or we take over payments. Uh, if you're buying rental properties, a lot of times properties in good shape, you just go to the bank and get your financing. 
Uh, how do you get funding for a short sale for a house that may need a lot of work and you have a, sh a tight timeline to, because I know a lot of times you might negotiate with a bank three, four months or whatever. And then all of a sudden they go, okay, we'll take it. You got two weeks to close. So where does an investor go to get funding for something like that? Well, that's kind of an interesting uh, perspective. That is a tip for your viewers. One, when you're doing a short sale, you need to turn your offer into the bank cash as is. There's mm -hmm. no loan discussion. Mm -hmm. There's no contingency on getting a loan. You right. turn your offer in cash as is. That's the only way the bank is going to accept it. And so mm -hmm. therefore, you get in with the negotiation process where the bank will give you a discount. But as you know, in all states, all MLS systems, you can come to closing with financing as long as you're not changing the terms of the contract. So you can come to closing with a hard money loan or you could get a regular loan if you had the time to do it. But basically, you just get a hard money loan. I mean, when I bought this house for twenty nine thousand six hundred dollars that I sold for two hundred and seventy five, it would be pretty easy to get a loan from a hard money guy on something right. like that. Right. right. Uh, and so you get a hard money loan to actually pay that bank off at closing. Um, and then if you're doing a rehab, just go ahead and use hard money to do the rehab, sell it retail on the MLS. If you want to be a rental with it, then that's fine. Get it fixed up, get it done, and then go and refinance out at your local bank, you right. know, that can cash out the hard money guy. Um, I fund people all the time on short sales, you know, with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the time people, you know, do that. And so, you know, um, now you don't have to get funding from me, you know, but, you know, you can get funding from anywhere, you know, on a short sale. Right. You know, and stuff. Okay. And if anyone wants to contact you about funding for a short sale and a rehab, they can reach you at this address, correct? Yeah. Yeah. They can email me there. They could, like I say, text Lynn to 636-685-2990 and I'll send you the PDF document and mm -hmm. you know, go through that. And so, now, keep in mind, I fund any house. It has nothing to do with short sales. Right. Okay. You know, I, mm -hmm. I've been fund doing lending for eight years. Mm -hmm. I've only been teaching other people short sales for, you know, two, two, two or three years. Right. So, you know, any house you have that's a good deal, you know, I'll fund fund that house too. But, you know, it kind of is synergistic with some of the short sale people because they feel more comfortable you know, that, you know, now they can do all this negotiation and feel comfortable that, you know, that, that I can back them up with a loan, you know, when they come to closing, you know, mm -hmm. on that house. And am I willing to loan? Absolutely. I mean, they're mm -hmm. buying houses with a hundred thousand dollar, you know, profit. I mean, you know, Christian just did a house where he bought it for a hundred. So he bought it for 106. He put 20 in it. Didn't really need anything, but, you know, he did 20,000 on it. So he had 126 in it. Just last Monday, his wife posted on Facebook, that they've got it under contract for over two hundred twenty nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, one hundred twenty six mm -hmm. under contract for over two hundred twenty nine in today's market. Okay, right. last last Monday he sold that that house with it in today's market. Right. So it's real easy to get one hundred twenty six thousand dollars on that deal, you mm -hmm. know, from a hard money lender. Right. Okay. All right. So David, if uh, anyone listening to this wants to learn more uh, about short sales, they can uh, visit your website, the David Randolph.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, I, got some, I got information on there on short sales, additional mm -hmm. information. You can right on that main page. You can go in there and get a, get a, 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 a explanation. That's much longer of what short sales are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, no cost video and slides and stuff. But, um, you know, I think it's really imperative for people to step up and start helping families out. We've got 1.5 million delinquent loans right now as of March of 2022 with the latest quarterly statistics. 1.5 mm -hmm. million families that need your help who can't right. pay and catch up on their loan. Mm -hmm. Right. I know. I know now is the time. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're with what's happening in the real estate market, what's been happening, what we're seeing happen already, days on market price reductions, uh, the inventory. You know, we lived in Colorado Springs, one of the hottest markets in the country, and the standing inventory has increased by just in the last 30 days. That's that's pretty strong. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's here's what's going to happen is that with the economy 
and people's household budgets, you have to drive your car and you have to eat. Mm -hmm. And that's eating up six, eight hundred dollars a month more. Right. Guess what takes the hit? It's the mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. OK, because you have to eat and you have to drive to work. And right. so what will happen is there's going to be even more foreclosures taking place. There's already one and a half million people that are late on their loan. OK, mm -hmm. struggling, hoping they don't get foreclosed on now. You know, you have people that basically uh, can't make the mortgage payment in the future because of the economy and the inflation. So it's just going to get worse over time. Right. That's for sure. Well, David, thanks so much for uh, for sharing all the information about short sales with us. It certainly it sounds like something that uh, that, that is going to be big business in the coming uh, recession or problems that we're going to be having soon. It sounds like you've been doing it all along, but be a lot more opportunities out there soon. Absolutely. Thank you very yeah. much, William. I really appreciate you having me on your, your uh, show podcast, you know, yeah. uh, with it. You're really, a really, uh, an interesting guy with a lot of knowledge. So I appreciate what you do for the industry. Well, thanks so much. We'll, uh, we'll have you back soon. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay, guys, that is it for this episode of the Sub 2 Deal Show podcast. Uh, if you have a minute and you enjoy the show, we would love a five-star review at Apple Podcasts. It only takes a few minutes, and it helps other people discover the show. We would also really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to our podcast um, over on YouTube at sub2deals.com slash YouTube. Uh, we release a lot of videos every week. And uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to the show. Again, if you're on a budget or you're just getting started, check us out. It's $7coaching.com. I guarantee you that is the most affordable, best creative finance coaching on the planet. So, guys, until next time, uh, get out there, talk to some sellers, and buy some houses. <laughs>